trailers aren't final. Animation secrets. So in this week's Animation Secrets, I wanted to discuss this topic because I saw a tweet about this related to an Eternals trailer clip that was criticizing it. And I wanted to emphasize to the animation community, especially just so you're aware when you're getting into the industry, that the work that you see in trailers is usually not final. When you're working on a film, there are trailer shots that are prioritized to get through the pipe, but typically the production is still ongoing and all of the rigs and characters are a work in progress. And some of the stuff you see in trailers won't even make it into the film. And there's plenty of examples like this. So one is actually with a movie I've worked on, Avengers Infinity War. In the trailer of that one, they have Hulk running through the forest, which was never in the film. So let's jump to the clip and take a look at what kind of spurred this animation sequence. So it's this clip, You, the criticism as you can see when it goes from PS3 cutscene to actual human being, which is pretty harsh and unnecessary critique, I think. And I, that's why I wanted to bring this up because this isn't final, this is trailer work. This is to get stuff out early and so all of this stuff is a work in progress and it should be seen in that spirit, right? And movie work in general is very difficult and so I find it very hard to be overly critical and uh, condescending to, to any kind of film work in general because I know how hard it is to make that stuff. Um, so this is the clip. I actually couldn't find this original clip from any of the trailers um, where it's edited this way. I found this clip, the animated one, um, in the trailer. So it's over here. And if we just scrub through, we can see this and actually cut out and it goes to a different shot. So, and this is significant based on something I'll, I'll go over here in a second, but if we take a look at this, yeah, they cut here before they even hit the creature there. But if we jump to the tweet, yeah, unfortunately I couldn't find the original one. If you know where this one is, send it to me and I'll take a look. But also take with a grain of salt, we're looking at a GIF, right? We're looking at, uh, you know, compressed uh, image of a trailer. So it's a copy of a copy, but one aspect of this that caught my attention and actually why I saw this tweet at all was because Ren from Quarter Digital had a really good response to this, that calling it a PlayStation cutscene when you notice the visual effects, it's a disservice to everyone involved and not even remotely true, though I get the implication the animation here is uncanny. And then there's literally a cut to the real deal. This take is a lame dunk. And it's he's saying it's a lame dunk of having context of knowing that this isn't final. It's a trailer shot, right? So not just that, he goes on more specifically to the fact that things are edited out of order in a trailer. That may not necessarily be this, the shot that follows the one that we just saw. So as he says here, the experience of noticing VFX here is the fault of editing. The actual shot is pretty dang good, but the awkward cut to jelly entering frame makes the contrast very evident. And I think that's true, but let's jump in a little deeper and analyze this shot just because it's being talked about and caught my attention today. So I actually pulled that out and from Marvel HD GIFs onto sync sketch so we could frame by frame through this and take a look at it on a bigger screen. So let me just make that go down and now we can take a look at it and maybe I can do some drawovers and, and tell you what's happening. So to Ren's point, this edit, if you look at the, the cut here, essentially we're going, she's facing this direction and then we cut and now she's facing the opposite direction. And that's one of the main giveaways that this is probably cut out of order. And that's to his point that he's making. Now I'll go a little bit deeper. Um, you know, he also mentioned that maybe the animation is a bit uncanny, meaning it doesn't seem uh, very as realistic. And that goes with the challenge of animating any superhero type movie, right? They're doing and acting in ways that are superhuman, right? They're superheroes and or super villains sometimes. So they're gonna move and act in a way that is less than photo real. So, um, or hyper real, right? And so your job as an animator is to kind of marry that bridge there to make sure that it is still believable and feels authentic even in the context of them being a superhero. So let's go back to a couple of spots that I noticed. 
again, in the spirit of knowing this is not a criticism of this artist or any of the artists involved. This is just simply an observation taken in the spirit of knowing this is a trailer shot. This is probably not even final and understanding the pressures and time crunches that are involved with production. So this is not some big dunk I'm trying to make on anyone. This is simply a professional uh, review and observation of maybe what I would do if I was in that position. All right, so here we go. So a couple of the first things I notice um, aren't even in my department. So this isn't even my lane that I'm making a comment on, but I think it's worth noting just the color matching is a bit off. So we have a fairly kind of desaturated Angelina Jolie character here. And then when we cut, we can see she's fairly gold here. Um, her hair color and her armor color is a lot more saturated. So already we have a bit of a disconnect here. So that's not even getting into the animation stuff yet. So let's take a look at the animation. So when she's coming through, we can see, yeah, maybe there's a bit of uh, a modeling disparity here on her face. But the thing as an animator that stands out to me are um, some of the poses and the motion. So if I was doing this, one of the things that I would do is maybe try to bring this knee down sooner. If we watch this knee, it actually kind of gets caught up right here. So it hits this pose and then it stays there for another frame, right? So we have it coming down. So it's coming, if we watch the end of the knee, it's, it is coming down, right? And then it gets here and then it gets here and it kind of gets caught there-ish a little bit. So the spacing slows down and then it speeds back up here. So to me, what I would want to see is kind of, it's a bit unnatural to be sliding on your foot and your knee. You know, if you imagine someone scoring a goal in a soccer game, one of the celebrations is they run and they slide on their knees. Um, you're not going to see someone slide on one foot and one knee. That's that, To me, this is already part of the thing that is kind of catching my eye, that she's already sliding on a foot. And if we watch the foot too, it kind of gets caught here, right? There and there, it's kind of still there in the same area. Um, one thing I do like is how this knee is kind of w is wiggling back and forth to convey some of the friction with the ground. I think that looks really cool. Um, but it's mainly this leg that kind of caught my eye that I would bring that down a lot sooner so that she's sliding on both knees and she pushes herself off and then gets to her knees and is sliding on her knees and doing this whole motion on her knees. All right. Now, another spot that kind of caught my eye is her upper body and how her shoulder maybe isn't leading as much as it could be in especially this arm swing. If we watch this arm, we can see that this hand is really coming forward uh, this angle is, is coming forward before her shoulder is moving at all. So typically, if you're throwing something, you really need to bring your shoulder into it and then your arm follows. Um, and we're not really seeing that here right now. She's just kind of like bringing her, her forearm in and we're not really seeing as much shoulder involved in that in the twist. And she also kind of hits this pose here. So like the way her body's facing and then and then she doesn't start twisting until like maybe in here. So there's a bit of a spot where she stops here twisting and then she just all of a sudden starts twisting again. And it's happening all together, right? We can see her hips and her upper body are kind of moving together all through this action, right? If we just scrub back and forth, we see her entire body where if we have, what I'd like to see is maybe her shoulder go first, then that's uh, dragging the hand and then the chest would go and then the hips, something like that, so that we get a bit more overlap in the in the action. The other thing that kind of caught my eye is how is just the pose of this. It almost looks like she's trying to hit him here when in reality she's getting into an anticipation pose for the big strike. So a one way around that could be to change the posing here a little bit, maybe have this hand up so that you have the knuckles here and that way you can have the blade here and it gives you a lot more room to actually bring this one in and have it be 
uh, closer here so it doesn't feel like it's pointing in this direction. Instead, it's kind of coming around pointing this way to, uh, you know, like she's about to kind of hug herself for that antic to go. Um, so that's just another thought, not to, you know, these are just in theory. This also kind of sticks here for a second. So we see a frame here, it jumps really big from here to here, and then it just kind of stays there, right? So we have this huge gap here and then a tiny gap here. So the spacing is a little, a little off to me on that. And then, um, there's a bit of another uh, kind of pose note here. She's very kind of, uh, her neck is craned maybe a little bit forward. And I think, you know, back to the knee thing, if her knee was down, we could maybe get a nicer line of action through the body and have her head kind of following that line of action back here and not have it be poked forward in front of her body as much. So, cause right now the line of action it's a, it's a bit broken up uh, where we kind of have this zigzag happening here. Whereas if her, her knee was down, we kind of get a nice C shape through the body and have her head, you know, follow that. Um, so again, this is just my opinion. Take it for what it's worth, which is for free and for nothing on YouTube. <laughs> um, but you know, if this is your first time watching, I am a professional animator. I've been animating for the last 10 years on movies like Avengers, Ready Player One, Transformers, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so the next thing would be um, that there's a bit of a spacing issue I saw in her getting up. There's, um, if we watch her head, so there's a big jump here from here to here, right? We have this slow, sp small spacing, very small space, and then a huge space, and then it slows down again, right? So now we go from small to big to small, right? And it's still staying here, and then it jumps forward. So my drawings aren't doing it just, so let's look at that final kind of lerp forward here. See how that, it jumps really big right here, and then it kind of slows down again, and then she, at the last frame, her neck kind of, her head kind of juts forward. You know, if we're looking here to here, when in reality, you know, it's like the silhouette, the spacing on her silhouette is a little weird because it goes back and then forward. So we kind of have this bit of a jittering on the silhouette of uh, the spacing of her silhouette. Um, and then, yeah, this is an edit thing where, you know, this there's no critique here because who knows if this is actually edit, edited in sequence or not. Um, and I couldn't find the trailer where this is actually from. And kind of back to my original point, all of this stuff about this, you know, spacing being off, that's not even in the trailer that I could find here. They cut before that even happens, right? So um, I think they, maybe they recognize that and they took this the, the best part of that shot that they liked. Um, not entirely sure. So that is kind of my critique of this. I also, I also looked at uh, the trailer, a trailer shot in, um, I think it was Deadpool on the YouTube channel. If you wanna take a look at that after this video, I, I looked at some things that I noticed in that as well. Um, this is kind of, it, once you become an animator, it's hard to turn these kinds of analyses off in your brain. And so hopefully this has been helpful for you if I share something like this. Um, that you get the benefit of seeing something through my eyes as a professional animator. And, but the big takeaway is that, you know, shots like these working on a trailer shot is a huge deal. If I worked on this shot, I'd be very proud of it. And I'd share it and I'd tell everyone, hey, go look at the work I did. Someone worked their life to get to this point to have a shot in the movie. And I don't want to uh, discredit that or diminish that in any way. This is a huge achievement for that person. And I wish it was my shot. That is a dope shot. Um, and if you go back through stuff I've worked on, you could have the exact same critique of my work. And that's why I like animation because you can always get better. And I know I can always get better. And that's why I pursued this as a career because I know it'll be a never ending journey of learning and improving. And to me, that's the most interesting life to live. It'd be very boring if you could just max out and get to a perfection level and, and there'd be no effort. That'd be very boring. <laughs> I would go try to find something I'm not good at and then try to be good at that. Um, and that's kind of what got me into animation because I wasn't great at it and um, I knew it was gonna be a challenge. So hopefully this was uh, insightful for you. If you like this video, please like, hit the thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. 
Um, if you're interested in the industry as a whole, I wrote an ebook about it. You can get it at ebook.digitalcreatorschool.com. Or if you want a paperback version, you actually get it at Amazon. But if you get it at Amazon, you'll miss out on a couple of bonus PDFs that I include with the ebook that you can get at ebook.digitalcreatorschool.com. Um, and you can also become a member and take my other courses on Digital Creator School. I will see you next time on Animation Secrets. I believe this is number 19 for now. So hopefully you'll also have a ton of other uh, animation secrets to go back through if this is one of the first ones you've been watching. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.